Hello everyone, it's Jeff here. Uh, this video is going to be an entry for uh, Andy's Vinyl Dens uh, comic book purge contest. So if you watch these videos of mine and because of the records that I show, I'm not showing any records in this video. It's going to be all comic related stuff. So if that doesn't interest you, you've been warned. Okay. <clears throat> now for anybody who's left, uh, um, Andy is running a contest in, in the, I guess, the comic book community. I don't really know too much about the comic book community, but that's probably something I'll have to search out. Um, he's running a contest um, because he's got a ton of really cool looking books that he wants to get rid of. So he's going to give them away to the winner of the contest. So uh, <clears throat> there's five questions. And I wrote them down so I wouldn't forget. And I've got my picks here lined up. And uh, I'm just going to dive right in. Uh, the first question is your favorite male and female hero. Now, I'm actually going to kill two birds with one stone on, on this a little bit. Because the fourth question is to show your favorite artist. So, my favorite hero and my favorite artist will both be covered by one of my picks here that I'm about to show you. But I'll go through it all as I go. Okay, this is gonna take me a minute, so just bear with me, because we're gonna get there. <clears throat> the very first thing that got me not so much, well, interested, but just made me, I guess, aware that there was such a thing as comic books. When I was a little kid, in the mid 70s was a thing that uh, Marvel put out I guess um, and they were a line of school supplies put out by the Mead Corporation the Mead Company and <clears throat> they were themed superhero um, school supplies like folders spiral notebooks Trapper Keepers, um, there would be um, packs of like notebook paper and there would be a iron-on transfer of a hero and the front that you could use that you could put on t-shirts when iron-ons were a big thing I guess back in the 70s. Um, but it was the folders that really captured my eye and interest and I have a whole set of them one, two, three, there were a set of six. And I had a couple of these back in the day when they were new. And of course, being a kid, they got used and used and abused and destroyed. So it wasn't until many years later on eBay, I was able to find a whole set of new folders. So I'm gonna show them to you very quickly in case you've never seen these before. And they all feature actual comic book covers of actual Marvel Comics of the day, basically, sort of semi-current. So you can see this is Thor, number 229. And on the back, it had panels. You know, it had like a page, almost a page worth of like, the comic. And you open it up, and you can see it's by the Mead. And it kind of carries over on the pockets. And you can see that these these originally went for 29 cents each, which is kind of a miracle. Um, <clears throat> that that this is one of them. I also had I had this in a trapper keeper, you know those plastic uh, three ring uh, notebooks. I had this back in the day featuring this Hulk cover, Hulk number 189. The funny part is what you saw on the cover didn't match the comic that they put on the back. Don't ask me why. And I got confused when I actually had a, an ish copy of this, of the comic book, and I looked all over for this page and it wasn't in there. Why they did that, I have no idea. So let me just show you quickly. <clears throat> These were really cool to a little kid like me because I was just starting to get into the to comics and superheroes. I didn't know anything about them. And seeing these large size 
covers. They also had Fantastic Four. I always thought this was a pretty cool cover. Fantastic Four 159. Uh, the coloring on these was slightly different than the actual cover of the comic book. I think just to make them a little bolder. But again, this did not this did not come from this comic. <laughs> so um, I used to know where all of these um, pages and panels came from. I'll just show you here quickly. The interior pocket art. <clears throat> this one I always thought was really cool. It's the Avengers versus the Squadron Supreme, Avengers 141. Again, kind of strange choices for these pages because not a lot of them not a lot of them have much action in them. <laughs> like this one, you think there would be something more like a fight scene, but it's not. <clears throat> this was probably my second favorite one. Amazing Spider-Man 135. Of course, the actual comic book, the background was black instead of yellow. But I think they just made it yellow so it would pop more. And again, this came from, I believe, Amazing Spider-Man 151. I think when he fights the shocker and here's the inside and this is a Marvel value stamp book which I can show you at the end you guys even know, know what those are I'll show that at the end as bonus material and the one that really grabbed me and the one that I'm going to use to show my favorite hero along with my favorite artist is Captain America by Jack Kirby so Captain America is my answer for my favorite male hero. Jack Kirby is my answer for favorite artist. And this was the first issue of his return to Marvel in the 70s. His big return to Captain America, Cap 193. This was not in Cap 193. <laughs> and I've got, I forgot I had, these are wacky packages. I'll, I'll show you those later too as bonus material if you're interested. I'll try to keep this video as short as I can, but I'm already seven and a half minutes. But anyway, this was the folder that got me interested in comics. This was what made me curious. This was what made me go, wow, I really want to see what happens in the story. Now, of course, um, back in the day, just to give you a little history, Cap's face was redrawn by John Romita Sr because for whatever reason Marvel didn't like the way Jack Kirby drew faces. So in a lot of his big um, covers for whatever comic he was drawing, uh, the faces were usually redrawn by another artist, usually John Romita. This happened to Jack Kirby at DC too. They, they didn't like the way he drew Superman's face, so his face was always redrawn by another artist. Whatever. But I wanted to show these. I pulled these out of the storage unit because this has been in the back of my mind to show these in a video because I think they're pretty cool. You know, they're <clears throat> they're very colorful. They're very artistic. And like I say, this isn't really a very exciting page, but it, it sparked enough to pique my curiosity, I guess. So, and this is one of my favorite comic book covers anyway. And I've got the comic book of this too, and. It's really great. So, uh, long-winded answer for the two questions. Uh, favorite hero, Captain America. Favorite artist, Jack Kirby. Okay. <laughs> now, the second part of the first question is your favorite female hero. And for that, I am going with She-Hulk. I don't have a lot of favorite female heroes, to be honest with you. And that's, there's nothing sexist or anything like that involved I just most of the heroes are, are guys and um, but there are always some exceptions and throughout uh, She-Hulk's career she's usually been written and drawn by some quality creators she had a run in the 80s written and drawn by John Byrne which was very very well done this particular um, collection was uh, came out probably I want to say about 10 years ago Drawn, uh, written by Dan Slott, and um, <clears throat> he writes these kind of. He kind of followed in Burns' footsteps with uh, 
the way it was written kind of like an almost like a comedy type of a feel book so I'm just trying to find some good pages here to show you um, here we go here's a nice you can see one of the nice covers usually drawn she's usually a lot of nice covers with a lot of nice action shots and of course being a Hulk you know she's super powerful so you usually get these you know she usually comes up against these these male villains who think they're all hot shit and she hulk just kind of goes boink and they crash through the wall <laughs> more or less so um this is pretty well well it's, it's been a pretty well written and well drawn series throughout the years with different creators and teams and runs so um I usually follow She-Hulk if I can. Um, of course, I'm not following anything right now. I don't even know if she has a, a current title, but this is my answer for that quest question. The uh, favorite female hero is uh, She-Hulk for me. Okay, now the second question is your favorite male and female villain. So for those, I'm relying once again on the Marvel Masterworks series. Um, and this one is uh, featuring the Amazing Spider-Man. And if you recognize this cover here, I think you know where I'm going with my answer to this question, which is the Green Goblin for my favorite uh, male hero, uh, villain. Um, before Marvel strip-mined it for all it was worth and basically ruined the the story these issues that came out in the early 70s were really some of the best comics that marvel was has ever put out and you can see this was the uh this was right after uh the death of gwen stacy who was peter parker's girlfriend and then you've got the following issue where he fights the green goblin and unlike what happened in most hero comics, which I think is why it's really stood the test of time and fixed in people's minds, is that Green Goblin actually died at the end of this uh, story. You know, follow through here, you can see him falling down there. That didn't happen in, in superhero comics in the 70s. So <clears throat> I think that's what made it the most memorable. You know, you had Peter's uh, girlfriend and his deadliest villain die in the space of two issues. So, uh, pretty landmark stuff for Marvel. So, and like I said, they, as the years went by, they, they undid all of this and basically rewrote history. <laughs> Which is what really bothers me about long-running superhero titles. But anyway, uh, the Green Goblin is my answer for favorite male villain. <clears throat> and then for favorite female villain, this one was another story that was strip mined by Marvel and rewritten and undid and resurrected and killed and resurrected again. But just like with those Spider-Man issues that I showed you, if you stick to reading the original story itself, it stands the test of time. So my answer for favorite female villain is Dark Phoenix. And what makes this even uh, more complicated is that, of course, Phoenix was a member of the X-Men and was a hero. But over the course of probably 15 to 20 comic issues worth of comics, um, her mind was slowly turned by another mutant called Mastermind, who was a master of illusions. And he basically got uh, Phoenix to turn evil and... Her massive, earth-shattering, world-killing powers. This was always a. I always liked this cover. <laughs> I have this. I have this original issue too. I always thought this is this was one of my favorite X-Men issues. Um, but anyway, he got her to turn evil, and of course, she unleashed her powers. She has this dark phoenix. And in the story, it's a great cover here. She ended up destroying an entire planet with her powers. It was an alien race that she just wiped off the map. And uh, 
<clears throat> eventually, here we go. Eventually, she would come to her senses for a brief period of time, and in that brief period of time, she knew what she had to do to stop herself, or what the only way she thought she could stop herself. And she, let me find the page here where I can show you. Sorry, 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 sorry. I should have had these marked before I did it. She ended up killing herself. So that was a very uh, moving story, very sad, very, it was very epic actually. And of course, um, it was a very famous story and Marvel couldn't leave well enough alone because it was very popular. So in order to sell more comics, they ended up bringing her back to life in the mid eighties. Um, Jean Grey, you know, the character's name is Jean Grey. They ended up resurrecting her in the mid eighties and made her, you know, a part of the team. And then she would die again and come back again and die again and come back again. So, you know, it, it really loses its power when you do that sort of thing. But the original story itself remains a landmark among Marvel Comics. So my answer to this is Dark Phoenix for my favorite female villain. Okay. Uh, my favorite series. This is going to be... No, I did favorite series. Sorry. Um, favorite writer is going to be another... Well, not really so much long-winded answer, but there's going to be two. Because I couldn't settle on just one. Um... My favorite artist, I uh, uh, already said, was Jack Kirby. One of my favorite writers is Frank Miller. And, uh, but I also have to qualify this because only, certain, uh, only a certain period of Frank Miller's career is what I consider to be really top-notch. And this, his, when he took over Daredevil, um, was it. One of, the, one of the things for me. And... Um, this uh, reprints his run on the Daredevil series back in the late 70s and early 80s. And you can see he really added a crime element, like a, like a, almost like a noirish element to the book. And of course he added in ninjas and karate and kung fu. And of course he had a blind, finds, finds out he had a blind mentor also who trained him in how to use his uh, super senses, called Stick. And if you watch the Daredevil uh, show on Netflix, you'll, you'll know who I'm talking about there. But um, the writing in this is really top-notch, and it's really like reading a crime novel. Um, he drew this book also, but the, but the inking on it was done, and it was so strong that it really kind of overpowered Miller's style, but it actually made the book look better. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, Frank Miller is one of my favorite writers. I mean, of course, he also wrote, you know, The Dark Knight Returns, which was another landmark story. And he also did a series called Sin City, which I'm sure you all know from the movies. This is a collection of the first... Um, Sin City uh, group of stories, and these actually, um, these are actually even more of a noirish type of a story and artwork than Daredevil. It's like he, he went way further with it. So, I'll just show you a couple more examples. You know, it's all black and white, you know, and it's all uh, shadows and, and negative space in the artwork. We go that's a pretty good pretty good picture there um after he did the first couple of sin city stories i think miller really kind of went off the rails um his artwork really got very primitive and very sloppy and very just crappy looking and his writing really veered towards like this extreme violent just I mean, and violence for no reason. It was just almost like, um, I don't know how to explain it. But this first Sin City run was really good stuff. And although uh, 
although I don't, I don't think he's a good creator anymore. I think he's put out enough quality stuff in his career to justify um, a place in, in my mind, in my opinion, of being one of my favorites. So um, Frank Miller is one, one of my favorite writers. The other one being Jim Starlin. And once again, I'll show the Marvel Masterworks. This is the uh, complete 70s run that he did on Warlock which covers um, the mid-70s. I think this came out in like the mid to late 70s. And he ended the story crossing over with like Avengers Annual and Marvel 2-in-1 Annual. So um, Adam Warlock was kind of like a... kind of a boring character. He had a, he had a series in the early 70s. It only lasted eight issues. And he was on Earth 2, which was on the other side of the sun from our Earth, and it was kind of like a bizarre world, Marvel Universe, and he really wasn't that interesting. And Jim Starlin came along and took over the character. Let me show you just a couple different pages here. Uh, writing and drawing the character, and uh, really giving him a little bit more depth a little bit more pathos, a little bit more, just made him more interesting. Let me just show you some of these other pages. And then he kind of combined that with almost like an Elric type of um, element to his story. Because you see the, the soul gem that he wore on his forehead actually stole people's souls. Kind of the way Stormbringer did in the Elric books if you guys know who Elric is. So he really kind of combined a lot of elements into one character and made him interesting. He made the supporting cast interesting. And I really liked his artwork. And um, <clears throat> here's Avengers Annual 7 that I was talking about. I actually bought this off the rack at a Hosco drugstore back in when it came out in 77. And I ended up rebuying it because my original copy got lost or destroyed so but um i love these marvel masterworks like i said just to have a durable reading copy of a lot of these uh, storylines because they're they usually reprint them completely and they remaster a lot of the artwork you know these are all the different soul gems i know we, this was before the infinity gauntlet and the infinity war and all those stories that came along in the 90s, which Starlin also did. This was kind of like the, the beginning of, of that whole um, epic story. So I couldn't just pick one writer because I, I just couldn't. So <laughs> I wanted to show this again. I wanted to show Jim Starlin. And that's my answer for the favorite writer question. Okay. Uh, 23 and a half minutes in. I think that's going to be it for my entry. I don't think I'm going to show that stuff. Maybe I'll show it in a different video. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just do another video and, and show the, the Marvel value stamps and tell you all about them. So, with all that said, uh, I hope you like this uh, entry for your contest, Andy. Uh, good luck to everyone else who's entered. And I will see you guys later. So, till then, take care. Peace. And I'll see you.